First Updates Now videos are brought to you by Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers, internships, and co-ops. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to learn more. So we're going to hop into uh, our next topic, which is going to be how, like, how has the season been totally different for your team? Or what were your initial reactions to how to approach this year's game? I know, Dave, you talked about it. A little well. You talked about your initial reaction when we went on and talked about mm -hmm. the game after kickoff. But um, Eric, why don't we start with you? So, with um, being super open, what has your team kind of done so far, and where are you guys headed? I mean, we haven't really changed anything. Uh, the openness is kind of all me. It all flows through me um, at this point, just because I mean we are a very young team this year. Um, we lost a lot of. You know, a lot of knowledge and seniors last year. Um, so, and we got we had a bunch of first years. So we're very young. Um, I don't. I, I feel like we're behind uh, overall, but I mean, we're not any farther behind than we were last year. And had we not lost seven build days to uh, school closings for weather, we would have had a robot built at the end of week four. Uh, so that's still our goal this year. Um, we're, we're we've got a lot of strategy things we, we talk a lot and we we theorize game matches and we sketch out different uh robot configurations um there was only like two robots last year that we didn't sketch out why so like 46 13 uh the redback parker redbacks like that robot came out of nowhere like that was not something we thought of but there wasn't really another and then 254 i mean a wrist on a arm yeah. on an elevator <laughs> on a turret, like, no, no, we didn't think about that because that's just outside of our capabilities. Um, but our overall strategy that we're kind of leaning towards is actually up on the screen right now, kind of in that uh, in the, the red sketch on the left side. Um, it's uh, a tower, a shooter tower in the middle. We're tall intake both sides. Um, we're, we're looking at various different methods to uh, intake. So like we're looking at like 125s intake and looking at um, 1986's carousel thing from 2017. We've been looking at uh, 217's uh, 2006 uh, intake, which uh, the Rem Rembrandt's uh, 4481, who is also in the Open Alliance, they they have uh, graciously shown all their awesome videos of their their prototypes doing that. We're looking at that too. I mean, there's there's a lot to fit in an area of robots. So like we're prototyping. We don't have a like really a direction yet it'll come soon and then once it's done once we're decided i mean it's it's all hands on deck uh i we had a team meeting earlier today and i said saturday is is catathon day so we meet 12 to 6 on saturdays it's going to be six straight hours hopefully of cat because hopefully by the end of day thursday we have a direction and we're just going to hit it all cylinders go so Awesome. Uh, what, what Tyler's showing right there, that's our, actually our 2012 robot being controlled by our 2019 robot. Um, our programmers are working on vision to control a turret because we'd like to always be like our thing right now is to play the front court in the game and can keep the perpetual feedback uh, of scoring balls and then having the other alliance be have so many balls behind their player station that they have to just dump them on the field and we just pick them up and keep scoring. So we, we've come up, like we've figured out a range in the front court where for the same shooter hood, the same shooter hood angle, the same theoretical uh, wheel speed that we can never have to change anything. And so just turn on the robot and as long as it can track the goal, we can score from a pretty big area. Theoretically, obviously, because I mean, it's a lot to choose and it's not even the end of week two yet. Right, but it sounds like you guys have made a lot of progress, and I'd imagine, you know, with people publishing so much from 2016, uh, 2012, and 2017 that's out there, I'm sure it's made kind of narrowing down your approach to doing different tasks a lot. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. we powered up our 2012 robot, uh, powered by the 2019 robot, and it powers the intake and the, the tower and our shooter, and it can play this game, so... Like, if you're wondering what you could do to, like, play this game, like, our CAD for 2012 is on on shape. You can download it. You can tweak it to play with the slightly smaller ball from, because it was a bigger ball in 2012. And this and our 2012 robot will play this game probably really well. Nice. And is there a place online on the Wave website or somewhere on your build blog that people can find that link? 
Uh, yeah, in our build blog, uh, I linked in our first official blog. It talks about the various robots that are on uh, on shape, and you can actually search on shape in the public FRC 2826, and it should pull up anything that we have public, which should be pretty much everything. Epic. So Dave, where are you guys right now? What is your strategy or approach to this game? Um, you guys have a relatively young team still. This is what, the fourth or third season Mechanical Advantage has been around? You're muted. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Still new to this. Give me a break. Um, I'm very, I'm very tired. I think this game is, uh, for the first time in a lot of years, I'm, I'm laying in bed at night trying to like visualize all of the different options, and I'm struggling just because I think that the, um, like I think it'll be fairly straightforward shooting the ball, right? And I think it'll be fairly straightforward picking up the ball with an intake, like a 125 style, like extend out, pull up over the bumper. Um, but then once you get it into the robot, I I have like a lot of concerns that there's going to be a lot of issues trying to figure out the best way to package it and the best way to get the balls to move together efficiently through um, through the through the uh, the whole system. So we're playing with right now. We're completely torn between two ideas. So we thought we had it where we were going to go with like a 2012. Um, uh, 2012 254 just like a little elongated with a uh, an extend out 148 style intake that just slid straight out somewhere to 125s and um and then have some the shooter go up but then the more that we play with it the more that we get scared of as the balls travel through the tunnel right you experience like the balls just stick together and then they jam everything we do they just jam so we tried to show it a lot with our the videos and the prototypes and right now we're putting together um i'll post some pictures and stuff up right now but if you scroll tyler if you scroll all the way down to our delphi post on our delphi post there's um so we're working so we we have the 254 style and then this is something new that we're trying to figure out if we can pull it up over the bumper and then um kind of very easily just run it around this to make the path that's inside the robot as simple as possible. Um, but we're not really sure. We're going to do more prototyping. I'm a little worried because I talked to some of the some of the other teams. Like uh, like I said, we collab with the Falcons all the time with uh, 2168, and I go down there and they've got like they've got it right. They got it. And then, um, but it just doesn't it doesn't feel right. But I think it's gonna it's like it's at that point where it's just about to come together. And um, so we're we're really heavy on WPI college students as our mentors. Um, I think we have six or seven of them and classes start tomorrow. So everybody will be back in the shop. This will be the first time for the season. Like, obviously, we communicate through Slack and, um, and Messenger and stuff. But this will be the first time that we'll get to um, sit down and go over the, all of our design requirements that the students came up with and sort of make sure whatever we end up with um, sort of hits all of those and then really pump through a lot of prototypes. Um, so I'm hoping by Saturday and Sunday, I'll be able to get in the shop with the CAD team and just do like a nine to nine on Saturday and a nine to nine on Sunday and just be cutting sheet metal next week and praying. <laughs> Sending thoughts. So, um, Necro Creature said, I personally love Open Alliance and such. I know Spectrum's build blogs are what really got me into mechanical stuff as a student. So, props to you guys on that. Um, so, it's it's really cool to hear that you guys are kind of sharing your, your like, successes and struggles so far during build season. Um, I think this whole experience of sharing everything that you're doing especially when everybody's running into these problems of like game pieces sticking together like you you get one part really nailed down and then you know the next piece you're just like oh, yeah. what do we do so it's i think for teams being able to see you guys get through that frustration and get through the problems that they may be running into and they're like okay well you know screw it we're just not going to deal with that anymore um it'll help kind of push them forward to see that you know everybody gets to a point where there's like, oh crap, like really don't know what to do here. But yeah, that's like the trend. The, 
the normal thing, right? I, I, this happens every build season that I'm a part of. You kind of get to this point, like week two, where you're like, oh, God, are we making the right decisions? Like, are these prototypes really going to be, um, like, really make some good decisions and everything? Or are we making good decisions with the prototypes, which ones we're picking to implement in the final robot that it's actually going to be, like, good? Or is this thing just going to be a cinder block? Like, <laughs> I'm having those moments the last couple of nights. Um, oh. And I think they're... Yeah, I'm sure most others are too, but I think that that's every day, a, man. Every that's day. always last... like the wall, right? Like when you're running, you hit the wall, and then you kind of like pass right through. So I see yeah, the my... end of the light of the tunnel, however small it may be right now. It's coming up, so I'm excited to have that process documented, so that I can remind myself next year when I'm going through the same thing. I can look back on this year's blog and then be like, oh, like this is normal. This is literally happens every single year. Yeah, I mean, yeah. every uh, every year we go through the same thing. I mean, last year it was week two, and we had all these sketches and theorizing what type of robot we should do. And, uh, like, as mentors, we didn't want to just build the previous year's robot because, I mean, 2018, 2019, you could have built the same robot and played the game. And uh, But then we were like, this is the best engineering lesson that we could possibly do. You take the lessons learned from all the terrible things that happened with our robot last year, and we approve upon it and we make a better robot. And so we had a good hour conversation with, I mean, a big group of students and everybody. And like, this, these are the routes. Like we have these 20 sketches of various ro robots that we could do, or we could just pivot and build, you know, looking at last year's robot, we could build that and make it better. And so that, that was our wall last year. And this year our wall has been getting game pieces. So like we've had one game piece until this evening. And so, like, we have all the, we've had these shooter prototypes and we've had these intake prototypes, but we're only intaking one ball. And I refuse to move beyond the prototyping until, like, we're playing with the amount of game pieces that we're going to have in a robot. And so, like, kids are like, I'm done. Like, they're like, we're on intake iteration four tonight. And I was like, I haven't seen a single intake that has worked because we've only had one ball. So, like, we just got 24 balls tonight. So I feel like we're way behind. And Dave keeps posting all these the blog post and I was like oh I gotta match this but I have nothing to post because we haven't like I feel like we've been stuck since last Tuesday that's so funny because I look at 4481s and I look at spectrums and I'm like oh my god yeah. like those geniuses it, it's, a, it's a tiny competition I was like oh I gotta have more views than this team and I've gotta have more that likes than this team thing. and I've gotta have all this stuff and I'm just like I'm we're at a point on wave where like hopefully tonight is like just snowballs from now that we have you know more balls to play with that it just it snowballs and like I have more stuff to post on Friday or Saturday when you know we have a direction hopefully. Yeah, and to the point of uh, game pieces, it would be really nice if we could all somehow get game pieces a lot easier than from one supplier, yeah. so we can well, actually know what's going on. There's but. that, and then we have the, this. You know, international teams are at a disadvantage, and they are because like I mean the Remembrance didn't get their kit of parts until last Thursday evening, our evening, so they're Friday morning, right? But they were able to use their half their first round first choice points to get more balls. So they got in their kit of parts five balls. I would have gladly taken that deal as a you know a non international <laughs> team because first round first choice is usually full of stuff that you don't like. I saved all my points for second round because the way the you know the bill of materials yeah, and call list uh, rules are that <laughs> it's better to save them for second round. I'd gladly take half my points first round for extra game pieces to know that I have more, especially in a game like this where the balls stick together way more than they did in 2012. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we got the ball, we're like, oh, that's no problem. This is 2012, let's just build 2012's robot. And then we started talking to all these teams that had more balls right away, and they're like, oh, no, they stick way worse. So yeah. I've just been in, like, this holding pattern, and I, all my students are like, can we do something else? I was like, no, you can keep making prototypes. <laughs> like, you don't, we, we're not doing anything but prototyping until we get more data. So. Understandable. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.